Greetings, it is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome! It is time to continue our discussion on Vampire the Masquerade in the World of Darkness. We, of course, were working about some information that is in the original printing of the Player's Handbook. Today I'm going to talk to you about mortals, some alternate information there, and some more clans and bloodlines that are out there. Also talk about some high disciplines, high rank disciplines above rank 5. So let's dive in with mortals, of course. Because mortals are very important in your vampire world. They fill it up, mostly. But the question is, would you want to play one? You can. Now, there are a lot of reasons to. First off, you aren't completely powerless. You get Nomeria, the special kind of ability that mortals can gain. And traditionally, though, ones that you might be playing would have access to this. Mortals also, though, they seem weaker, and they really are weaker than any other supernatural creature. But they do get some advantages. For one, you get a lot of role-playing options. It adds a lot to it. The dynamic between you and a supernatural creature would be interesting. You can move about in the day in society without ever having to worry about anything. That's a big advantage. And if you want to play something that's a little challenging, then maybe humans are right for you. So when you're playing a mortal, of course you're going to get less to your attributes and abilities than a normal person, than a normal vampire would, but you get more freebie points. The thing is, you can also spend those, and this is beyond what you may get for merits and flaws, you can spend those freebie points on the Numeria, which come in three forms. Faith, Thaumaturgy, and Psychic Abilities. Now, each of these is defined separately and has their own same ranks, very similar to disciplines, and you can choose one of them and effectively have it as your human ability. Now, this doesn't mean there are other versions of mortal characters that you can play. Hunter the Requiem gives a lot more options for more hunter-based characters, so if you want to play a vampire hunter, I'd recommend checking that out. If you're playing any sort of other humans that are going to be in relation to vampires, use this one. Now, granted, you do not necessarily need Hunter the Requiem to build a hunter-type mortal, especially if it's going to be an NPC for you storytellers out there. You can use this system just the same. So let's move on and talk about some of the other things that are mentioned here. The first off is alternate talents, skills, and knowledges for your character. This means if you've looked at the talents, skills, and knowledges, and there's some kind of something from amongst them that you'd rather take than what you have on your list, there's an entire listing of alternates that you can also take. These would be, of course, you could replace the ones that you have on the list because it doesn't. It just means that you're not taking that, especially. But in, in essence, it, they are alternate ones you are allowed to take to increase the types of skills you have, and they function just like the same. They have five, one to five ranks. They tell you any kind of specializations in them. You can just look through them and see if there's one that interests you from amongst those. After that, we have to talk about high level play effectively very old very powerful vampire play whether you be playing it or not or have it as an npc in your game this book here gives you information on disciplines from rank 6 to 10 10 being the maximum that an antediluvian could take or theoretically maybe a special way for a character in game but traditionally antediluvians are the ones that get up to that level of power Disciplines up at this level are very powerful, and it gives you options of what their abilities would be. Sometimes it gives you a couple of optional abilities that you could choose one of to be at every rank, similar to what they did in the lower rank disciplines. But effectively, if you want to take high rank discipline play, this gives you the options for it and shows you off what kind of abilities you'd get for playing at that very high rank, or for having an NPC at that very high rank. The exception here is Thaumaturgy, which works very differently. Thaumaturgy offers a whole slew of new paths to take. Just as you sort of would level up a path as its own discipline almost individually, this gives you a whole bunch of other paths that you could either start with as a character or gain access to later on and perhaps uh, fill in your, your block of skilled disciplines with more paths that you're maxing out at five. Ones above five are only theorized and not really known about, only to the elders of the Tremere. They also list a lot of thaumaturgic rituals in the book, from rank one to rank ten. So, 
All 10 discipline ranks worth of thaumaturgic disciplines are listed here in the book. So if you're looking for a thaumaturgic ritual, you can also check in this book here for an entire listing of them that might be open for you to use. Now this book here lists an entire group of other bloodlines and clans that you can have access to. May I note some of these in later editions ended up in the primary core book. So some of these you might already have heard about if you've got a different and newer version of the core book than the one I've been talking about. For example, the Anniversary Edition definitely has some of these added into the book. So the first one is Asamites. Asamites are vampires which function as killers and assassins. They have very powerful bonds of blood between them and have problems with using their blood with other people. Their abilities stem on being very reducing their sound and going in for the kill. So as I said, they are assassins with a sort of tainted blood. Next are the Followers of Set. The followers of Set are pretty much hated by everyone. They're big on corruption and decay. They have abilities that sort of stem around that. They follow this Egyptian deity Set and effectively have this almost kind of religion in amongst themselves that functions as their clan hierarchy to a degree. So it does have these very religious connotations in believing in the belief, in the, the belief they believe in stuff. And of course, though, their entire concepts of decay and stuff are really what scare people away from liking them. So they are generally disliked. There's the Giovanni. The Giovanni are an interesting bloodline as they are effectively work in the vampire world as merchants or investors or traders. They're what would be closest to a mafia type family. They have that entire kind of concept of the family, that they have their hierarchy, that the elders are sort of in the position of the godfather types, and that the other members go below them. So they have a very interesting kind of Italian feel to their hierarchy, traditional Italian mafia feel. There's the Giovanni, who share a lot of traits with the gangrel, except rather than being loners, they are incredibly social, loving to hang out with each other. They're very similar to a vampiric version of a gypsy, gypsy groups, and in fact that is their nickname, gypsies. They enjoy traveling and they are masters of trickery type abilities, so they are an interesting sort of take on the vampire. The Salubre. The Salubre are universally hated and nearly extinct. Tremere was... Tremere, the anti-Diluvian, gained his powers by diab diabolizing Selot, the Salubri Antidiluvian. You can see where the things went. The Tremere slaughtered them pretty much down to that they have very few members and only a handful that are actually confirmed to be in existence. Whether more are existing, hard to say. But their abilities stem around healing, actually, or healing both mind and body. They are the furthest along, naturally, to the path of Golkana than any other vampire but they're still hated for their generalized nature. There's the Daughters of Cacophony, who are thought to perhaps be an offshoot of the Tremere. It's hard to really say, but they are mistresses that believe in a kind of artistic flair, similar to Shir, but straight through voice. They are singers, performers, who use abilities almost siren-like through their voices. The Semeti. The Semeti, it's hard to say where they've offshooted from, but... Uh, they are as ugly as the Nosferatu. In fact, they are probably worse than the Nosferatu. The Nosferatu look like they're horribly disfigured. The Semeti look like rotting corpses. Their abilities stem around this sort of characterized decay that they exist as, and oftentimes making things look like them. So they are not liked particularly because they're horrible looking, just a disappearance, but they aren't really bad clan in a bloodline in and of itself. So that's it for today. I introduced you to, of course, playing a mortal in Vampire the Masquerade. Talked just a little about it, didn't go into full depths about it. If you have the option of it, you can talk with your storyteller and look at the full stats of information that are in the book. I just talked about the basics of playing one and what it would mean to play one. Then I talked into some alternate rules for your characters, including alternate talents, skills, and knowledges, high-level disciplines for something that might be more NPC-driven, or perhaps playing elders in a game. Then I talked about a, a group of alternate clans and bloodlines that I haven't mentioned before. Might be in your core book, depending on the edition you have. But regardless, I mentioned them, gave you a bit of information about them. Next time, I'm going to talk about the new disciplines, the ones that are linked to these 
clans, the ones that are their clan disciplines, and talk a little bit about them, and move on and talk about equipment. Another thing this book does much better than they did in the second edition core book. So if any questions, comments, anything you say, anything you think I left out, please just leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Shows your support for the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, check out my Patreon, linked in the description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.